Former President Donald Trump has made good on his threat to create a new communications platform for himself after being banned by the Silicon Valley tech giants. However, this is not a social media platform, it's like a news feed about President Trump's latest comments and announcements. Titled, From the Desk of Donald Trump, the site appears at donaldjtrump.com slash desk. The site, which went live Tuesday, lets President Trump post comments, images, and videos, but does not permit, as Twitter and Facebook do, comments from users. The site does, however, permit users to post President Trump's content to their own Facebook and Twitter pages. According to Fox News, the site appears to use Campaign Nucleus, former campaign manager Brad Parsale's digital ecosystem made for efficiently managing political campaigns and organizations. President Trump has been banned from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Snapchat. The Trump's desk rollout comes the day before Facebook's oversight board will announce whether to make permanent President Trump's banning from Facebook and Instagram. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said Monday Republicans are open to supporting a $600 billion infrastructure bill, well short of President Biden's vision. Mr. McConnell said GOP lawmakers oppose the administration's push to roll back parts of the 2017 Trump tax cuts to pay for roads and bridges. Mitch McConnell said in Louisville, We are not going to revisit the 2017 tax bills. We are happy to look for traditional infrastructure pay furs, which means the users participate. Joe Biden is pushing a $2.25 trillion American jobs plan that includes everything from road and bridge repairs to building electric vehicle stations and eliminating lead pipes. He also is calling for passage of a $1.8 trillion American families plan that invests in various social programs, including pre-K education, community college childcare and health insurance subsidies. Biden has proposed paying for his vision by rolling back the Trump tax cuts to return the top marginal tax rate to 39.6% from 37%. Biden has proposed higher capital gains taxes on households earning more than $400,000 per year and raising the corporate tax rate from 21% to 28%. Mr. McConnell said Joe Biden's package is too expensive for the GOP. He said GOP lawmakers are rallying around the $600 billion infrastructure framework that Senator Shelley Moore Capito of West Virginia unveiled last month. The GOP plan centers on a more traditional definition of infrastructure. It sets aside $299 billion for roads and bridges, $61 billion for public transit, $65 billion for broadband and $44 billion for airports. Mitch McConnell said it has been hard for Republicans to find bipartisan consensus with Democrats because they can't resist stretching out the pandemic, using it as a rationale for additional spending beyond what is best for our country. Mr. McConnell said, I think it is time to take a look at our national debt, which is now as large as our economy for the first time since World War II. That appears not to be enough and the president laid out last week another $4 trillion package loaded with tax increases that will slow the economy and more massive dent all in the name of infrastructure. But, of course, infrastructure is only a part of what they have in mind. Joe Biden and Democrats passed a $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan, which included $1,400 stimulus checks, that was financed with borrowed money. Joe Biden says his latest plans can be passed without adding to national deficits and the national debt, which recently climbed past $28 trillion for the first time. Joe Biden's commission exploring a Supreme Court makeover has given liberal activists and lawmakers a rare opportunity, a chance to realize the political left's longtime goal of curtailing the lifetime appointments of justices. Term limits or mandatory retirement ages for Supreme Court justices would represent a path of less resistance for the left, especially when compared with more radical proposals such as packing the conservative-leaning court. Advocates for term limiting say the length of tenure on the court has nearly doubled in the past 50 years, from an average of 16 years in 1970 to 28 years today, according to an analysis by the left-leaning advocacy group Fix the Court. Gabe Roth, the group's executive director said. 
Three decades is too long a time for anyone in a democracy to have as much power as a Supreme Court justice has. Term limits or age rules would not necessarily provide an immediate benefit to Democrats because many of the most recent appointees are relatively young. President Trump's three appointees to the nine member court are Justice Amy Coney Barrett, Justice Neil Gorsuch, Justice Brett Kavanaugh. The Constitution has been interpreted as giving judges lifetime appointments. Article 3 reads The judges, both of the Supreme and inferior courts, shall hold their offices during good behavior. Impeachment typically has been used to force a judge from service. Liberals have put forward several plans for term limits. Some of the proposals wouldn't take away lifetime appointments but would rotate the court on which the justice sits from the high court to lower courts. One plan calls for a constitutional amendment that would end life tenure after 18 years. The justices could remain part of the federal judiciary for life but would serve on lower courts with the permission of the Chief Justice. Another proposal would have the president nominate a justice to the court in every odd numbered year. The nominee, if approved, would begin serving only after a retirement. Supporters of rotating justices say it would help lower the stakes during confirmation battles. Mr. Roth said justices would no longer game their retirements and hold on to their seats past their primes and until a like minded president sits in the Oval Office. He supports legislation that would change tenure by creating senior status for Supreme Court justices. After 18 years of service, a justice would be allowed to serve elsewhere in the judiciary for life. Mr. Roth said, Senior status for lower court judges was created by Congress, so Congress could create a kind of senior status for future high court justices. Conservatives worry that rotating justices could further polarize the confirmation process. Kurt Levy, president of the Conservative Leaning Committee for Justice, said, It could potentially turn the temperature up rather than make things less political. We already have enough fights over the Supreme Court. Also, if a president is able to nominate a justice every other year, then a two term president could appoint four of the nine sitting justices. Mr. Levy said, I think that is a little disturbing for some people. Still, debating term limits is less partisan than packing the court. Mr. Levy said, It's a compromise. I think it will make even progressives feel better. Things are being done. The issue of term limits for justices has been a subject of debate for years, especially when questions are raised about mental capacity as justices age. Justice John Paul Stevens, who died in 2019, expressed concerns in 2011 after his retirement that he wasn't articulating his positions as well as he had in the past. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Who died in September, and Justice William Rehnquist, who died in 2005, missed arguments during the last years of their lives because of health issues, though neither faced questions about their mental capacity. Mr. Levy said, If you're senile at 80, there's nothing forcing you to get off the court. That, to me, is the bigger concern.